Uh, am I audible, Neelam? Hello, everybody. This is Padmaja Angar Paddy. Namaskar and good evening from India. A warm welcome to you all on this pre Deepavali evening of some great poetry and poetic tete tete in this maiden session of International Poets Me series facilitated by my friend Neelam Saxena Chandra. I also welcome friends connecting with this meet on Facebook Live. I welcome our guest poet all the way from the United Kingdom, Simon Fletcher, a renowned poet, literature event organizer, and a language tutor. Hi, Simon. Welcome to the live streaming studio of StreamYard. Hope you're comfortable and able to hear me. Yes, perfectly. Yes. Good, good, good. Uh, I now extend a warm welcome to uh, to Dr. Santosh Bakaya. Is she here? Yeah. A much decorated and accomplished Indian English poet, scholar, academician, editor, and fiction writer. Hi, Santosh. Welcome to the live streaming studio of Premia. How are you this evening? Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you, Santosh. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hello, man. I can yeah. hear you, Hello. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I have great pleasure in welcoming another multiple Hello, award. Hi, Santosh. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Hello, I can't hear you. No, no, okay. you aren't audible. I can't hear you. Okay, okay. Um, Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, let the guests come in. I have great pleasure in welcoming another multiple award winning and highly accomplished Indian English poet, academician, scholar, and writer, Dr. Sunil Sharma. Welcome, Dr. Sunil Sharma, to the live Thank streaming studio of Premier. Yes, yes. Hope all of us are well settled and are audible to each other. No? Yes, yes. You're audible to me. Okay. A hearty welcome to you, my dear friend Neelam Saxena. Thank you for facilitating this maiden session of International Poets Meet series. Truly kudos to you for this concept of a cozy group of poets meeting and sharing poetry and their journey and their poetic journey. In these times of pandemic, I think such meets do serve as a great morale and energy booster. What say, friends? I request you, Neelam, now to say a few words on this new initiative of yours. But before that, let me share a few words about you in introduction for all those who have connected with us. Though you really don't need an introduction, Neelam, you're so well known. But still, I'll do a, the formality. Neelam Saxena Chandra, a bilingual poet in English and Hindi, works as an additional divisional railway manager, Pune, Maharashtra. She's an engineering graduate from BNIT Nagpur, a PT diploma holder in IM and HRD, and also in finance. She has completed a summer course in finance from the London School of Economics, an author of four book novels, one novel, six short story collections, 31 poetry collections and 13 children's books. Neelam is featured in the Limka Book of Records 2015, published by the Coca Cola India, as the author having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. Neelam is a recipient of several awards and honors for her writings, notably a second prize each in a poetry contest organized by the American Embassy. A New Delhi in a national poetry contest organized by Poetry Council of India 2016. Sohanlal Dinivedi Puraskar for Children's Literature 2018, instituted by the Maharashtra State Hindi Saitya Academy. Humanity International Woman Achiever Award 2018. Bharat Nirman Literary Award 2017. Premchand Award by the Ministry of Railways. Rabindranath Tagore International Poetry Award, Sunindar Samman, and Freedom Award by Radio City. 
She was listed in Forbes as one Am of I the. Am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Uh, Neelam was listed in Forbes as one of the 78 most popular authors in the country in 2014. I now invite you, Neelam, to, to please uh, give your introductory address. Over to you, Neelam. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm audible. Am I audible? You are. Yes. Can somebody I can't see, but I can hear you. If I'm audible. You can hear me. OK. Uh, so friends, a uh, very warm welcome to you. Uh, this is our very first endeavor uh, made possible with the help of Pedi. And uh, I'm so great, uh, greatly happy that you all are here. So I would like to start uh, with four liner. One day, I shall leave the world. And if you are remembering me, one day I shall leave the world. And if you feel like remembering me, search me not in my ashes. In my words, you can rummage me. Wow. So it is the words which are most important uh, for any poet or a writer. So uh, uh, it's really wonderful to have so many established poets with us. And I welcome you all. And I thank Paddy for connecting us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Are you through, Neelam? May I come in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Neelam, for setting the tone of this meet with your introductory remarks. Thank you so much. I now invite our guest poet from United Kingdom, Simon Fletcher, to please read his poem. But before that, there are a few lines in introduction about Simon. Simon Fletcher lives in the countryside in Shropshire, England, and is a widely published poet who has performed his work across Britain and in Pakistan, Germany, and Norway. He is currently the manager of Offas Press, uh, www.ofaspress.co.uk, and runs poetry writing workshops in green spaces and green places. He has read his work on BBC Radio Shropshire and BBC Asian Network. Simon regularly organizes monthly live literature events in Wolverhampton and Ironbridge, Telford. He also tutors for the Workers' Educational Association. He is an author of four poetry collections. His most recent, Close to Home, was published by Headland in 2015. More about Simon can be checked out on www.simonfletcher.net. Over to Simon. Please read your poem. Simon. Can you see him? I think he's not connected. Uh -oh. <laughs> he got disconnected. I cannot see him. Uh, so Nor can I. Say, Nor can I. Yeah. Oh. So you can move ahead and when he comes in, I'll uh, take sure, sure, sure. the studio. Okay. Uh, okay. Part of the challenges of technology. Yes, 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 yes. I now invite my dear friend Santosh. Okay, shall I endorse, uh, invite Santosh? Yeah, I now invite my dear friend yes. and well known poet, Dr. Santosh Bataya, to read her poem. But before that, here's a brief bio. Can you hear me, Santosh? Yeah. Dr. Santosh Bataya, educationist, poet, novelist, essays, TEDx speaker is a winner of the International Real Award for Literature for her long poem, O Hark, and has been critically acclaimed for her poetic biography of Mahatma Gandhi, Ballad of Bapu. She is also the recipient of the Universal Inspirational Poet Award 2016, instituted by Pentasi B. Friendship Poetry and Ghana Government, the Bharat Nirman Award 2017 for Literary Excellence, Setu Award 2018 in recognition of a stellar contribution to world literature. The first Keshav Malik Award 2019 for her entire staggeringly prolific and quality conscious program. A 
TEDx talk on the myth of writer's block is very popular in creative writing classes. I have heard that one, that TEDx talk. Dr. Santosh Bakaya has a popular column, Morning Meanderings, on the Learning and Creativity website, which is now an e-book. Over to you, Santosh, now. Please read your poem. Santosh. Thank you so much, Paddy. Can you hear me? I can. Hello, I can. can you hear me? Yes, I can Hello. hear you. Okay. okay. Dr. Sunil Sharma, Paddy. Hello. Hello. And Neelam. Neelam Saxena ji. I am going to recite a few verses from my book, O Hark. This has been okay. recently published. Originally, it was published as a poem as a part of an anthology in the year 2014 when it won the Real International Award. Now it has come in full length book form and uh, it has illustrations by Avijit Sarkar. So allow me to recite a few verses from this. May I? Sure, sure. So hello, 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 everyone. Please. Hello. Okay. And uh, let me tell you, there's this uh, oh hawk. I used to write this oh hawk on Facebook every day. This was uh, four years back. And uh, this was a full pleasure book. And initially, when I started writing this, uh, and during the writing of this book, it wasn't a book then, I killed one of the characters. And they would come and cry, don't kill that character, uh, revive him. So I revived the drama in this book. So uh, let me read a few verses from this. And uh, there is a writer recluse here. Uh, there is a midget here. And there is a reincarnation of Madame Defarge here. And uh, there is a log cabin in the woods. And these four or five characters, they reach the log cabin. But there's a writer. He's a writer recluse. He sits there. He writes there. So he uh, okay. I'm writing magnum. I'm writing my magnum opus, but mediocrity rules the world. People have no interest in my writings. In pain, his lips curled. There were various books in every corner and every nook. Even next to a flower pot, there was a heavily dog-eared book. The poet said. You sit here reading The Wind in the Willows. This sedentary lifestyle to your weight will just add kilos. Suddenly, suddenly there was a silhouette framed in the window and a sound resounded. Please, please hurl a book soon, bro. The best ghost stories of the world I would love to read. The writer said, I always cater to the whims of this breed. Through the window, he heard the heavily dog-eared book. With the scramble for the book, the log cabin loudly shook. Peeping through the window, the poet saw a scene new. On a miniature Ferris wheel, silently sat figures too. Surrounded by a miasmic haze, into books they burrowed, and read on and on and on, hunched, unblinkingly eyes furrowed. When everything is dark, they silently creep from nooks and raise a crescendo, demanding lost classics and books. One of them insists on reading the classics like Don Quixote. One even asks for Ulysses. I simply do not know what to say. And if you're lucky, you can hear them dance and sing. They are bewitched and do her bidding like puppets on a string. Lo and behold, sudden music wafted through the window. The midget flung away his apron and was all set to go. His eyes shone.
Hello, sorry, I just disappeared like these ghosts here. The book is full of ghosts, and I also disappeared. Can you see me now? <laughs> yes, we can. We can. Please continue from, from where like you are. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. And continue from where you are. Yes. And if you are lucky, you can even hear them dance and sing. They are bewitched and do her bidding like puppets on a string. Lo and behold, sudden music wafted through the window. The midget flung away his apron and was all set to go. I'll stop here and uh, you continue, Paddy. Thank you so much. Before Thank I disappear again. Yeah. Thank you, Santosh. That was a very enjoyable poem and it kept me smiling throughout. Uh, I'd like to ask a small question about this poem. Uh, can you please share the trigger for this particular poem? What was the trigger for this particular poem? Actually, I don't need any trigger. They call me the Mad Hatter. I just start writing anything that comes to my that catches my fancy. So one day I just started writing this on, on Facebook on this vibrant uh, writers group, the Significant League, and I did not know what I was writing. I this uh, it became a book wonderful that's how you know words connect and they become a book wonderful wonderful uh, santosh thank you very much for that lovely poem uh, from your book oha uh, since simon is here uh, since simon is here uh, simon i'll once again read your bio you were not there when i read out your bio so i'll once again read out your bio simon F uh, fletcher lives in countryside of shropshire england and is a widely published poet who has performed his work across Britain and in Pakistan, Germany, and Norway. And he is currently the manager of Ofas Press and runs poetry writing workshops in green spaces and green places also. He has read his work on BBC Radio Shropshire and BBC Asian Network. Simon regularly organizes monthly live literature events in Wol Wolverhampton and Ironbridge Telford. He also tutors for the Workers' Educational Association. He's an author of four poetry collections. His most recent, Close to Home, was published by Helen in 2015. Uh, more about Simon can be checked out on his website, www.simonfletcher.com. Over to you, Simon. Please read your poem. Hi, Paddy. Thank you. Uh, I have to say that most of the biogs that you, you read out has changed somewhat in the last six months. I do no longer teach um, for the WEA, and um, our live literature events have also gone down the pan, of course. Um, but we have now re-established a virtual voices event. Um, which has taken a while to work out because, um, well, I'm not great at the technology, as you probably have worked out already. Um, I'll no, read. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll read. I'll read a poem called "Books," and um, there's a, there's an epigraph, uh, which is a quote from Erasmus of Rotterdam. He was a humanist philosopher around around 1500 and is somebody who who's thinking about life and society fed into the um what we might call the english renaissance and the move towards uh having the bible in english i think the seeds are there um of course having the bible in english meant that every man and his dog could then read the bible and come up with a different interpretation which has led to a, a certain amount of tension ever since. Um, anyway, this is a quote from Erasmus. Um, he's, and the poem's called Books, and you'll understand why in a moment. Um, this is the quote from Erasmus. When I get a little money, I buy books. And if any is left, I buy food and clothes. And that's um, something I understand. I live in a house of books, have friends all over the sapphire globe. We talk of India, China, Egypt, France, the Ganges, Yangtze, Nile and Seine. 
I've got to know the ones that live with hope and wonder in their eyes. I find they've taught me how we're all alike and sing the same old songs of home and family, the food we eat, how injustice hurts in Reading or in Rome. How love's the same in Seattle or Shanghai, and how we all demand to have our say, the right to speak of desperate straits we sometimes pass. We're plainly cut from one plain cloth, and madly human, mostly kind. Okay, did everyone hear that? <laughs> and time. That was a beautiful ending to your poem. Um, I just want to know a little bit about the uh, writing, poetry writing workshops that you organize in green spaces. What exactly yeah. do you do there? Um, I just wanted to ask first, Paddy, did, did you actually hear me reading the poem? Yes, we did. Thank you. Oh, oh good. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Um, well, I, yeah, I mean, as a, a professional writer and um, poet and whatnot, um, one of the last things I do is write uh, because I'm usually intent on earning money from actually doing something productive. So running workshops in the countryside is, is something I do regularly, um, although they can be in urban spaces as well. And um, I think it's part of the health agenda, really, because when I run workshops in the countryside, particularly in the village where I live here, um, I find that a lot of people come out from the cities and towns to um, have a day out, get some fresh air, you know, look with fresh eyes, uh, enjoy the countryside, have a good walk, etc., etc. And usually they arrive looking a bit dusty and a bit, you know, downhearted. Uh, but when they go, they're all smiling and happy. So it seems to work. Wonderful. I think that's a very interesting concept. And I think you're doing wonderful work. When people come to the countryside, you send them back with poetry. That's something wonderful. Thank you, Simon, for sharing your insights. This is a really very good experience. Maybe we'll come sometime to your place and we'll also get <laughs> do a workshop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are very happy to see many of our friends, Satbir, Chad, Satbir Chadhaji and several others joining us live on Facebook. So a warm welcome to all the people who have connected with us on Facebook and other media. Uh, I now invite Dr. Sunil Sharma, the renowned Indian English poet. But before that, I'd like to share with you all a few words and introduction about him. Dr. Sunil Sharma is a Mumbai-based college principal, literary editor, and an author with 22 published books to his credit that include seven collections of poetry, three of short fiction, one novel, a critical study of the novel, and nine joint anthologies on prose, poetry, and criticism, and one joint poetry collection as well. He is a recipient of the UK-based Destiny Poets Inaugural Poet of the Year Award 2012. His poems were published in the prestigious UN project Happiness, the Delight Tree, an anthology of contemporary international poetry in the year 2015. Dr. Sunil Sharma edits the English section of the monthly bilingual journal Kotu in English and Hindi, published from Pittsburgh, USA. The website name is www.setumag.com is where this popular bilingual literary e-journal could be accessed. So go for it, friend. Website not to be missed. Over to you, Dr. Sunil Sharma. Please read your poem. Thank you very much for such a generous introduction. Ready? Yes, 
Uh, hi to all my friends. A pleasure to be a pleasure to be hosted by such distinguished author like Paddy Madam under the overall administration of Neelam Saxena ji. Nice to catch up with my friend, another very distinguished writer, Santosh Bhakaya ji. And of course, my new friend in the literary cyberspace, uh, dear Simon. Well, I would like to read my poem from this collection, Aesthetic Negotiations. Is it visible? Published a couple of years back. Yeah, okay. The title is Groundlings. Of course, it doesn't refer to the Shakespearean groundlings, another kind of person you see in slums. I would like to describe the plight of such a person individually and as a collective in urban spaces. Here it goes, the poem, Groundlings. We are still here. Your bulldozers flatten the shanties. Threw away our meager belongings in the drive against the dispossessed, sparing the rich. We are back. There is no roof, no walls here. Like seeds, we grow everywhere. Cops will come and shoo us away. But again, night, we will return and reclaim the dusty ground because we are the groundlings. Our homes do not add to pollution, as do their gadgets, the gadgets of the rich. Just a pale bulb and a carbon tap, no wastage. Hard work and sound sleep envy of others. Why do you keep on driving, driving us outwards? We can sleep under the stars, under a welcoming tree. Our life is a public spectacle watched by the motorists gleefully. After years of freedom, we remain perpetual wanderers, homeless in our own country. But we no longer care because we are not going to get justice. We, the children of the earth and the sky, a lean and muscular tribe, we will survive this long demolition drive another violent nights of the sick metropolitan India. Thank you. That was a very touching poem from Dr. Sunil Sharma. And it spoke so much about the urban poor who normally migrated from, migrate from villages to cities in search of livelihoods and end up under the under construction flyover. It was a wonderful poem. I'd like to ask a small question to Sunil Sharma. Um, I have noticed that in many of your poems, the city of Mumbai and its various facets have featured in, in your poems. Can you please share as to what strikes you the most about the city of Mumbai and which of your observations do you share uh, in your Mumbai themed poems? 
Well, that happens to be my current news. Although I have written about Delhi, Noida, other locations, including Europe, Canada, America as well, China also. The kind of landscape I see here, the kind of visions, they appall me. They appall my conscience as a sensitive writer. I'm not concerned with any kind of feminism, communistic experiment, experiments, linguistic innovations, abstractions. Okay. My primary concern is about the dispossessed. And great writers like Dostoevsky, they have Maxim Gorky, so many others. They continue to guide me. They are my immediate masters. That is it. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. That was a very insightful, it was a wonderful insight that you shared with us and who inspires you and the great masters who have inspired you. Thank you so much. So now it's the turn of our facilitator, the facilitator of this meet, my dear friend and a much decorated and multifaceted personality, poet, fiction writer and whatnot, Neelam Saxena. I request you to please read your poem. But before that, for those who have just come in, I'll read her bio again that I had shared in the beginning of this. Neelam Saxena Chandra, a bilingual poet in English and Hindi, works as an additional divisional railway manager, Pune. She's an engineering graduate from BNIT Nagpur, a PG diploma holder in IM and HRD, and also in finance. She has completed a summer course in finance from the London School of Economics. An author of four novels, one novella, six short story collections, 31 poetry collections, and 13 children's books. Neelam is featured in the Limca Book of Records 2015, published by the Coca-Cola India. As the author, having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. Neelam is a recipient of several awards and honors for her writings, notably a second prize each in a poetry contest organized by the American Embassy in New Delhi and a national poetry contest organized by Poetry Council of India 2016, Sohanlal Dvivedi Puraskar for Children's Literature 2018, instituted by the Maharashtra State Hindi Sahitya Academy, Humanity International Women Ach Woman Achiever Award 2018, Bharat Nirman Literary Award 2017, Premchand Award by the Ministry of Railways, Rabindranath Tagore International Poetry Award, Sonindar Samman, and Freedom Award by Radio City. She was listed in Forbes as one among the 78 most popular authors in the country in 2014. Over to you, Neelam. Please read your poem. Over Thank to you, you so much. Thank you so much, Paddy. Uh, now I'm feeling very, you know, <laughs> I can't put it into words. Sometimes poets are also at a loss of words. So I am in that state. Uh, so thank you so much. And um, uh, I would like to read a very sensitive poem. Uh, which uh, has been uh, transmitted even by Doordarshan. It is uh, regarding female infanticide. So uh, the poem is titled Fearful Adieu. Mom, so secured was I in your womb. My life inside you was a real miracle. My tiny feet swam in glee. My little hands cuddled you merrily. My toothless mouth would often giggle and cackle. Mom, so happy was I in your womb. But one day, some quivering clatters I could hear. I heard someone scream and roar, I don't want daughters anymore. I sobbed as I listened to your helpless tears. 
mom how could i smile in your womb when i understood that being a daughter was so bad my little eyes cried and heart yelled something in me had already failed alas i realized that i would soon be dead mom although i shall no longer dwell in your womb your warmth and affection i shall surely miss to you i shall not lie i had not expected to die but fate had in store for me this deathly kiss mom so happy i am to have been a part of the womb although the togetherness was destined as a short boon as death pounces and approaches near i bid you a tearful adieu mom dear may a hundred sons be born to you soon may a hundred sons be born to you soon thank you thank you so much wow that poem just reached my heart through that infant female child that female infant you have conveyed you have shown a mirror to a very rampant problem in india a very rampant issue of uh, female feticide and female infanticide uh, so touched by a poem dear neelam i'd like to ask you was any particular incident which triggered this poem and after that i'd also like to ask you about your red diary the book that's coming up <laughs> well uh, this particular poem i wrote because of a different reason uh, there was an employee working under me and um, he came up to me with sweet saying i've got a third child so i asked him why did you go for a third child just like that i casually asked so he replied i had two daughters so that touched my heart and i felt uh, it is so disgusting that we go for a child not because we want the child but we uh, want a male child so that is how this poem was uh, born and regarding my new book which is coming up uh, the red diary uh, you know i love to interview relationships and social issues so this is one such attempt uh, there are very intricate uh, social issues which can happen in any part of the country or uh, world sorry and um, uh, i've tried hard to say how it affects the characters so i hope you will all read it and uh, like it sure, sure, thank sure, you so sure. much i always thank buy you so your much. books looking forward to the, the red diary thank you so much thank you i know <laughs> so it is my turn now to introduce uh, paddy our dear hostess so padmaja ayanga paddy formerly a senior banker and urban governance consultant and the honorary literary advisor of ccva vijaywada is currently an advisory panel member is isar calcutta and the editorial counselor india international writers journal usa her maiden poetry collection pensions has been recognized as a unique record of excellence by the indian book of record for its never before attempted movie reviews and management topics in rhyming poetry paddy poem paddy's poem articles and short stories some of their prize winners are published in various anthologies newspapers e zine and print journals a recipient of several awards paddy has compiled and edited six international multilingual poetry anthologies of which amravati poetic prism 2016 to 19 have been recognized by the linka book of record published by coco cola india as poetry anthology in most languages so over to you paddy we are all eagerly waiting to listen to your poem thank you neelam for that wonderful introduction <laughs> much obliged uh, i'll read a short poem from this wonderful poetry anthology uh, uh, 
Dancing the Light, that was edited by uh, Robert Madoff Harley of uh, Australia and Dr. Jaydeep Sarangi of India. These have uh, poems from poets from India and Australia, primarily. My, the title of my poem is Deliverance. The darting eyes of a child, bright, guileless, and divine, curious about everything, God smiles through those eyes. The smiling eyes of a child, spreading cheer and light, filling hearts with pure joy, God speaks through those eyes. The playful eyes of a child, naughty and challenging, speak louder than words. God resides in those eyes. Why go seeking deliverance? Why go looking for divine light? Why go searching for heaven? Just look into the eyes, into the innocent eyes of a child. Thank you. Wonderful. That was a wonderful poem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think with this, we come to the end of the first round of poetry reading. So shall we move to the second round? Neelam, shall we move to the second round? Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, there will Madam be a Mosai, Madam Mosai, aapke hato mein sari hum logo ki ye hai, kya bolte hai, whip. So you can command us. <laughs> we are a team here. We are teammates here. And I once again welcome all the people who have joined us on Facebook Live. Thank you very much for being there and supporting us. Dr. Sangeeta Sharma, Anjali Srivastavaji, Sadbir Chaddhaji, a warm welcome. Sumita Datta Shom, my friend, a warm welcome to you. Um, now there will be a slight reshuffle in the order in which I earlier invited. Now it's the turn of Dr. Sunil Sharma to Dr. Sunil Sharma to start his poetry reading. And uh, I don't think once again we have to read the bio. So over to you, Dr. Sharma. Thank you very much. This is a shorter poem. It's called A Puppet Show. On a summer evening, a puppet show, corner of a large compound emptied of cars and bikes. On that hour, for that special show. It demonstrates the power of narrative and of the painted faces, silken clothes, huge whole eyes, how wood undergoes a dramatic change and characters from folk tales come alive. How deft fingers and voices manipulate the medium and the audience? Alas, it reminds me of a happy childhood in a small town decades ago. Now, the puppet show is extinct everywhere like the dodo as unfortunately nothing is left of the childhood or open spaces in metropolitan places. Thank you very much. Thank wonderful, you, very wonderful. It was a wonderful poem. And once again, you know, I think it's a poem, very, it's a topic very close to your heart. The urban sprawl, the urban poor, and the lost childhood in this, uh, what shall I say, the concrete jungle. Yes. So that was, again, I would like to know what triggered this poem. 
Well, very obvious. I saw this happening few years back, and the way the poor puppeteer was holding the attention of the kids and the adults alike. Right. The kind of live art. Now the not completely lost in the commercialization of art spaces everywhere. So that appealed to me. That came up as a very powerful image, which yes. translated itself into this small poem about loss, loss about not only childhood, open spaces, but also about tribals and other people, marginalized artists, sure. folk artists. That's all. The imagery was really striking in your poem, Dr. Sharma. Kudos. Uh, so, I now invite my dear friend. Dr. Santosh Bakaya, to please read her poem. Over to you, Santosh. Please read your poem. Santosh. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can you hi. Hear? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Paddy. And it's wonderful to do these beautiful uh, poems, so poignant. And the poem that I'm going to recite now is uh, Granny of the Red Roses. This poem is about my granny who uh, used wow. to hallucinate. She was, uh, she was, yeah, she was 80 years old when she died and she used to live in her own world. So I remember uh, some snatches from her life. So this is Granny of the Red Roses. You know, we had a love marriage and he would try to win me over with roses, bright red dripping with love. But all men are philanderers. Up there, he's now involved with a woman, a cockpit, you know, woe, woe on her. My 79 going on 80 granny would whisper. Often, I would feel something stirring in her, a sweet unrest throbbing in her chest, some happy, youthful recollections visiting her at night some sounds and long forgotten names beckoning her like homing follows and she would smile and smile and smile i knew she was sailing journeying along in a sea of memories to that pine forest under which under which a besotted couple sat lost in each other long after granny had shed her earthy garments Long after Granny had shed her earthly garments, her physical presence replaced by a gilded picture on the wall, garlanded with marigold flowers. One day, we the kids rummaged through her meager belongings and gasped. And gasped. Between the folds of her pristine white saris, a feron long abandoned, and a patina crusted photo of a handsome lad lay a handful of roses, blood red, their fragrance long frozen. I visualized her as a young girl being chased by a scrawny lad, my granddad, whom I never saw, among the tawny fierceness of the Deoda trees, offering her a rose in a tender gesture of everlasting love, while she clasped which she clasped in a slender hand. Did she blush? Did, did his hands brush her cheeks fleetingly? Did she gush? Did she gush a thousand little words of gratitude as the blue whistling thrush sang and sang? Is he still wooing her with red roses up there? His first and last crush? Thank you so much, Shri. Thank you. This is about my granny. Thank you, Santosh. That was a beautiful poem steeped in nostalgia. Took us all back to our childhood, to our own grandmothers. You know, we have all had good time with our grandmothers. Unfortunately, I, I missed my grandmother uh, when I was very young. So this was a beautiful poem. Thank you, Santosh. But I, I also know you are very involved with Mahatma Gandhi. You recently guest edited a special edition on Mahatma Gandhi for the Setu magazine. I mean, uh, hosted by Dr. Sunil Sharma. Besides your your well-known poetry book, The Ballad of Bapu, it's a very well-known book. 
So please share, share some insights about your deep engagement with the life and works of Mahatma Gandhi for the benefit of our oh. viewers here. Well, hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear well, you. Well, my Pankos. father was a great Gandhian. Yeah. My father was a great Gandhian. First thing that we heard when we were kids, and we, he used to tell us stories, and he would relate uh, incidents from Mahatma's life, and we did not know who he was. But gradually, we started picking up snippets from here and there, and he made us read books on Gandhi. And that was the beginning, of course. And uh, he used to tell us that Gandhi has a cure for every illness, every evil, every uh, evil present in society. And that was the first thing that we uh, learned at home. And then later on, of course, I started uh, I, when I started teaching also in the university, I taught Gandhi. And then uh, there was uh, in my MPhil's class, there was a student who was very, very brash, who was very, very arrogant. And he started uh, uh, bad mouthing Gandhi. And he said, Madam, I am a Mahakavi. I am a Gandhi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Hindi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Mahakavi. I am a Mahakavi. So this is how Ballad of Babu happened. And, uh, it has become a bestseller, and I'm so happy. And uh, people are still reading it. And uh, Dr. Sunil Sharma just gave me a wonderful opportunity of uh, talking to people about it. And I was uh, very touched by this kind gesture of his. Uh, thank you, Santosh. Thank you so uh, couldn't agree with you more. Or your father, Mahatma Gandhi, and his ideals are timeless and will always be relevant today and hereafter. Too. Thank you very much. I now invited our respected guest from the United Kingdom, Simon Fletcher, to please read his poem. Over to you, Simon. Please read your poem. OK, thanks very much, Paddy. Um, I'm going to read something um, which is a father-son poem. Um, much has been made of dysfunctional relationships between fathers and sons not just in Western Europe, in America, all over the place. And although I'm, I'm quite sure my father never gave me any red roses, he did give me a kind of quiet support. And we learned res huge respect for each other, working in the fields when, when I was a lad. And this poem describes <laughs> cutting grass in a meadow for hay using a, a simple form of uh, a tractor with a cutter bar uh, and a lot of um, a lot of muscle power um, and I suppose it's a memory of something that happened about 50 years ago perhaps a little bit uh, more recently uh, so the poem's called the yield now the word yield is rather an old English word and it of course has a financial connotation. The yield is what you gain from an investment. But this is a metaphorical yield where what I've gained is a deep sense of working the land, working with somebody, working in a trusting relationship. And although dad is now long dead, you know, I still remember him fondly working the fields uh, in my childhood, because we had a small farm. And, um, yeah, so this is a description. And uh, I'll leave the uh, listener to infer the emotions. The yield. Into the depths of a moss-green afternoon, the grass cutter moves across the field. The engine chugging, racking its way along. The man in charge walks steadily ahead, but scans and reads the ground for any bumps or nesting birds among the thick set grass. Sweat trickles from his greased black thinning hair across his reddening shoulders, cotton vest. His hands are oily, but alert and firm. The scent of new mown hay is everywhere. It falls among the clover, rattle, vetch, moon daisies, pays a tribute to the earth. 
Behind, a young man moves his pitchfork in a circular rhythm, scooping, dragging, laying the hay in regular swaths to dry. It's taken all day to mow this acre field with breakdowns, rests, repairs, and that too brief, all aching break for lunch beneath the birch tree. By tea, the field is cut, wasps' nests avoided, the calculations made on numbers of bales, the yield, the likelihood of present rain. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Simon. That was a very poignant uh, oh. <laughs> And we have uh, seen several facets of fathers and relationships. I think this is a very novel presentation on, on a very, very close relationship. And it was a very well-written poem. Thank you very much. Uh, I now invite I suppose, my friend Neelam. I suppose, uh, uh, Paddy, I suppose Simon wanted to show us something. He was showing us a book. Please. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, sorry. Just... I'm sorry. Yeah, please, Simon, you're telling us something. Can you see that? Yes, yeah, the poetry mm -hmm. wants to share. It's an anthology I edited last year for okay. um, Office Press. It's a collection of poetry from this part of the world, Worcestershire. You've heard of Worcestershire Source? Well, Worcestershire is where I grew up. So it's an anthology of um, poems from different poets from that county. Thank, Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Managing the publishing bit, tutoring, organizing literary events. You do have your hands full always, isn't it? Thank you, Simon. Now over to you, my friend Neelam Saxena, to please read her poem. Over to you, Neelam. Thank you, Paddy. So I feel like we are all very philosophical. All poets are very philosophical. And uh, we try to find philosophy in every little incidence of life. So um, my poem is also something like that. I'll begin with a four-liner. The heart is delighted by the first. The other makes the mind go numb. The, the heart is delighted by the first. The other makes the mind go numb. Happiness and gloom, like twins, holding the hand together come. Happiness and gloom, like twins, holding the hands together come. So um, the title of my poem is The Tree Covered in Red. The large tree, standing tall and erect, sways in joy as September spreads its cloak of happiness. Come October, a few exquisite red flowers bloom. The tree is exuberant, dancing in sheer delight. Come November, the rains drizzle. The atmosphere is vibrant with hope. Now, the tree is completely red. And even the tramp who passes by looks at it in naked bewilder bewilderment. Soon, it's December. The frost begins to cover the earth, the flowers wither, and the tree becomes barren. Soon it is December, the frost begins to cover the earth, the flowers wither, and the tree becomes barren. I passed by the tree several times during the year, and I've never seen it grieving. And even in the month of December, it smiles and waves at me. I look at it amazedly and ask, don't you grieve for your loss? Don't you grieve for your loss? It replies with a grin. No, there's no use shedding tears. I wait for the next September to come and cover me with red once Beautiful. again. That was a wonderful poem, very evocative, very inspirational. And there's so much of learning in that particular poem for all of us. That was a wonderful poem, Neelam. Thank you very much. I'd just like to ask you.
you a small question because I'm also a woman. Uh, sure. You're a bureaucrat in the Indian railways. You're a multitasking, multifaceted personality. How do you manage to manage your time, you know, which is so precious for you? Doing so many things, you run poetry groups, you host uh, uh, poetry workshops and so many other things. How do you manage this? And then you have hold a very high position in the Indian Railways as a bureaucrat. You're an IRS officer also. The biggest secret, you know, come close, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't watch the idiot box. <laughs> so since I don't want oh, to, I get a lot of time. And uh, you know, uh, poetry is an inspiration for me to work hard and do better in my job. So I suppose that happens with everyone. And it is the same with me also. Thank you, Nilam. That was very insightful. And your poem was truly inspirational. Thank you very much. So now I would like to invite you, Paddy, for another sure. wonderful poem. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Neelam. And this is again a very short poem. Uh, here, you know, it's my conversation with God. It's a conversation with God. So wherever him is referred, it's a capital H. Uh, it's called The Final Flight. That's the title of my poem. The more I love him, the more he seems to ignore me. What all should I go through to make him my love see? I search for him inside me for a bit of his loving presence. But all I find is a dark emptiness enhanced by his absence. I keep asking myself, what should I do? What should I do? Where is he? Where is he? Please show me a small clue. Restless, sleepless, hungerless, thirstless, senseless, clueless. I search for him everywhere, only to find his evasion ruthless. Why is it that the more we crave for someone's attention, the more are we ignored by that indifferent someone? Ours days, nights, weeks, months, years rolled by and on. Till lifeless I lay on my deathbed, hoping for my bride dawn. Suddenly I felt a light glow within me, trying to leave my being, which seemed to say, here I am, it is me you are seeing. Leaving my lifeless body behind, my soul followed that light. My entire being glow with his love, I took my final flight. Thank you. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. It was also and, from the uh, book. OK, OK. So can I ask you a question? Sure. sure. From where do you find so much enthusiasm? I just saw you organize such a big poetry meet and you make uh, everybody write for your anthology. And uh, if uh, some good poet misses it out, you'll reach out to him or her and say, you haven't written, you haven't written. So how do you manage all this? Uh, it's a very simple thing, uh, Neela. I'm a very small time poet. I'm still a learner. I'm still a student. I often bask in the glory of all of you great poets. And I'm learning from all of you. So I never miss an opportunity to, you know, pick people and learn from them. This is my very simple and simple secret. No secret at all there. I'm a student. So I keep seeking teachers, you know, all the time. So that's what makes me, uh, makes me go and makes my world go wrong. So that's so wonderful to know. And we Thank are all you. unmuted. Sunilji, you can also unmute yourself uh, for the final round of chit chat that we can sure. have before saying uh, goodbye. Sure, uh, sure. I suppose it has been a very wonderful session with uh, some of the best poets uh, here. And we'll surely invite some other very good poets. So, uh, uh, 
let me ask everybody a question from where do you find your inspiration let's begin with uh, simon simon sorry um, neelam i couldn't quite make out what you were saying could you repeat the question uh from where do you find your inspiration to write um i think that's a very very complicated question and what i would say <laughs> is that yeah i think it's complicated because it's so various sources of inspiration um it's i suppose in one sense having a voice insisting on being heard about something um but where does it come from who knows i don't know <laughs> what about you santosh santosh hello can you yes Hans. where Hans. do you find your inspiration Hello, can't hear you. Sadi, can you repeat? Yeah, Santosh, uh, Neelam is asking Hello. you from where you get your inspiration to write. Can you hear me? Santosh, Neelam you. wants to know where do you get your inspiration to write from? Can't hear you. And so let's move on to Dr. Sadi. I cannot Sanitra. hear you. So let us move on to Sunil ji. Uh, Sunil ji, from where do you find your inspiration? Well, one of my collections of poems is titled very aptly "Mundane My Muse." The everyday, as I said earlier, the community which is very unequal that I inhabit as a middle class person. as an academic as a writer as a freelance journalist uh, as i said earlier sometime back the unequal society across the world that is possessed so these continue to be the sources for my humanism for my liberalism and in a very limited sense of the term my activism as i said again some time back that the 19th century russians taught me a lot the dispossessed the poor dickens another example so these great writers these masters continue to speak to me and like their humble follower very very humble they are the summits i try to record i try to give voice to the voiceless that's all wonderful wonderful very wonderful and we end with you paddy uh, no you are still there i would like to know what triggers your inspiration to uh, uh, for me anything serves as an inspiration very often you know i read a small news item and then i immediately write five lines a limerick called news merics you know this was my hobby for quite some time any news item i would see and if it uh, appeals to me i used to immediately write a limerick i even wrote one about when richard gersh kissed shilpa shetty and it was so much in the news in those days so you know <laughs> <laughs> so for me anything serves as a trigger and uh, often the you know something that happens in the society especially any incident you know any particular incident uh, it immediately triggers some kind of a, a you know poem in me some kind of thoughts that i try to shape into a poem Uh, but i am a very simple poet so you know there's nothing big uh, inspiration and all that i'm still learning <laughs> and what is all the yeah i would like to add to your poem a poem by paddy it was really moving i could feel a sense of spirituality mysticism thank you thank and you dr that, sharma if that could 
uh, uplift you i think it was really a mystic experience for me listening to you Thanks. same way with saiban the way he takes up very ordinary experiences in life and then turns them into beautiful art the i agree way he used metaphorically language and language and art they become metaphor they become symbolic i felt so enriched personally the relationship between a father and son and most important dear simon like paddy's uplifting of that experience that sense of doom the near death like experience very mystical yeah. ritual other world i would say in your case also i felt that the uh, relationship between the father and the son can be taken to another level absolutely if you are favorably disposed towards fresh interpretations god father uh-huh. so many and it's an open text so if you are able to produce open text like neelam like paddy santosh simon so you feel enriched and it becomes a multi layered product it will continue to speak beyond your geography and culture and that becomes transcendental thank you i have made myself clear as a student of literature thank you very thank good you. summing up dr sharma i Thank hope i am right fact simon am i right well that's what i try um which is why i started off with a poem which named various cultures ancient cultures indian egyptian french yes. and so on because i am an internationalist and a humanist and i find the good in people i try to write about the goodness in people and present a picture Uh, and that is a picture of an old an older man although looking back now he would have roughly been about my age now when i that scene happened of course it happened every summer we had to cut the grass for hay to feed the animals in the winter and it was very hard work very hard work and the tractor always broke down and we got stung by the wasps you know these little stinging insects and uh it got set burnt by the sun sometimes it does we do have sun in england sometimes and uh yeah but i'm trying to make a picture that goes beyond the local beyond the immediate little bit of england that i lived in that is recognizable also in india and america and africa because there are fathers and sons working together yes everywhere absolutely. and there, there is that 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 it's it's a it's love with a very small l perhaps the word is respect thank you very much sunil very kind the memory the memory, memory is very important in your poem memory which plays a very crucial role in simon's poem true memory. thank you yeah. thank you yeah. i think you know, uh, i'd like to ask you neelam about your own inspiration especially uh, your poem on female feticide infanticide was a beautiful poem because as a woman you know i could very much relate to it and uh, i would also like to know how what inspires you generally um, i i would uh, like to add a point madam sure, sure. madam uh, infanticide actually is a very a sensitive topic and neelam again that activism you can see sure the poets must speak on such topics poetry is not about yourself about not sure. language about not formalism it's sure. about community sure. it was very moving a poet of your stature serving the government such a senior position with responsibility could speak like this to us hats off to you my respect thank you thank you thank you yeah. so much uh
answering pedis question it is always an upsurge of emotions which makes us write poetry either it could be happiness sadness something that touches us or uh, deeply in our heart that makes us come out with words and it could be anything it could be our personal experience it could be somebody else's experience but something has to touch somewhere uh, some spot to make us write so it was a very wonderful session and i thank yes. you pai for organizing this and uh, i thank simon yes. and <laughs> ट <laughs> 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 and uh, the the major discovery is uh, simon fletcher for me yeah. absolutely so neil can i can i just ask you a very quick question um yes. we we have in britain uh, a poet called imtiaz darker yes, yes and yes. she's written a lot of stuff about the children in the slums in mumbai mm, yes, yes. she used to be a volunteer worker mm. there um and obviously with the name her name suggests she she's a muslim but she's actually married to a hindu gentleman and they i think they live in the i don't know where somewhere in britain um but she's a very good poet um imtiaz darka her publisher is blood ax might be worth checking her out just a thought <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I Patty, I'm sorry if I've been looking a bit blank most of the last hour but uh, I I couldn't actually hear yes, very yes. clearly uh, yes. for about uh, 30% of the time. Okay. So I was missing the missing the uh precise sounds of words. Yes, 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 yes. It's it's been it's been difficult but I think worth the effort I think. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's a debut. We take that as a take home point so that we can improve upon it next time. This is a major session. So we'll certainly work on this. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Problem is with the uh, this late form. It's our debut here, and of course yeah. we will keep on improving. I understand. I understand. We're going through the same issues here in England. It's a bit of a nightmare trying to get people together to talk to each other. at the moment and they and they you lose them and they wander off and yes but very productive evening and but we'll get better <laughs> thanks everybody thank you very much yeah i hope you'll invite me back one day anyway paddy yes. thank you i would like to add one more thing about simon he often translates ghazals and yes. i wow Urdu ghazals into English of uh, Basir Sultan Kazmi, who is an MBE, member of the British Empire. He writes in Urdu and he translates so into English. So I would English. like to invite him now to write for us at Setu also, Simon. Uh, well, I have written some ghazals, and one of them is in the uh, the Kenyan anthology that's just coming out with work by Neelam and Paddy in it. And you know the anthology. Uh, Christopher Akemwa's anthology on COVID. Yes, yes. There's a sort of an English, an English version of a castle in there. It, it's a little poem called "A Part," um, yes. sort of love poem, I suppose. But yeah, I loved, I loved the Gazel. And when I, when you say I translate Basra Sultan Kazmi's work, uh, mm -hmm. it really I'm translating his English into English. Nice. I'm not translating from Urdu. I I don't know well I know a lot of words but I don't know the you know the grammar mm -hmm. so um yeah I'm helping him to create english versions of his gazals yeah even in the way what i feel is that some kind of collaboration can be established between yes. british and indian yes. authors yeah well i've been working yes i've been working with 
sorry, I've been working with Nasser for many, many years. We've known each other for 25 years as friends. We're just friends. We, we regard each other as writers and poets first, and then all the other stuff is secondary, you know, but we get on very well. We spend days together kicking around ideas, discussing Dostoevsky or Shakespeare or Dante or um, Nasser Kazmi, his dad. His dad was a fine poet etc so it's a, in, an interesting link yes and i was very very happy to go with him to lahore uh, 20 years ago so paddy madam more alliances can be forced yeah, yeah. All, all, of, all of us have been collaborating simon it's a small family of writers you think about it do that, do that. thank you Neelam, for providing this platform to all of us. My, my pleasure, my pleasure. You have been the facilitator of a very wonderful event. Uh, you have mm -hmm. been doing this in Hindi, now in English. I don't know what hereafter, maybe multilingual. So, <laughs> is the go-to woman for all kinds of poetry and all kinds of platforms. Thank you so much, Neelam. My kudos and respect to you. Yes, thank you, Neelam. You. My well thanks to all of you. My humble thanks to all of you. Thank you. Goodbye. You're very organized. Okay. Good night. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Have Bye -bye. a nice day. Good night. Good night.